Hi students, welcome back to our chemistry classes. After the successful completion of our first lesson, we are going to go to our second lesson that is if marker around the sphere. So our first lesson was matter in our surroundings. So now we are going to analyze whether the matter present around us are pure or not. So what is what is the meaning of the word pure? When you go to a supermarket or when you go to a shop, when you go to purchase some eatables or edible things, we may check whether it is pure or not. How you will check or what is the way pure means to you? I'll explain, suppose when you purchase milk or when you buy some milk, does it pure or not? How will you find out does it pure or not? That milk, if it does not contain water or any other undertones, we can say it as pure. Commonly we say it as pure. Or when you buy salt, if the salt does not contain ingredients other than salt, sometimes it may contain some um, particles, black colored particles and other things, sometimes it may contain in the salt, then we say that it is not pure. So for a common man, pure means substance that does not contain any adulterants or substances that has not undergone adulteration, they are known as pure substances. But for the scientists, pure doesn't mean that adaptation. For the scientists, pure means if it, that substance should be made up of only single type of matter. It is made up of only single type of matter or all the particles of that matter should have the same chemical properties. Then the chemicals will say that that is pure substance. So according to the scientists, milk it is not a pure substance. Milk is not pure substance. We know why milk is not the pure substance. Because milk contains different ingredients. Milk contains water, main part of milk is water, proteins and fats. So milk contains these ingredients. So water, protein, fats. So scientists won't say it as a pure substance. Instead of pure substance, they will say that milk is a mixture of water, proteins and fats. Hope you are understanding. So then we can, we can say it as pure substance. If a substance contains only one type of substance or matter, then we can call it as pure substance. For example, sugar. When you have taken sugar, it contains only sugar matter. It contains only sugar substance. So we can say that sugar is pure. And when we take salt, if the salt, it contains only salt, means other impurities are not present, then we can say that it is also pure substance. So, before this, I, I am coming to this example once again, milk. According to scientists or science, milk is not pure substance. Milk is a mixture. What is mean by mixture? What is mean by mixture? What is mixer? Mixers are constituted by one or more pure form of matter. It constitutes so mixers are constituted by more than one kind of pure form of matter. For example, it is a mixer, milk is a mixer that is composed of water, protein, and fats. So, and one more thing. From the mixer, 
the components can be separated can be we can separate the components by physical means for example sugar solution or water the salt solution salt solution means salt in water so we can separate salt and water by the method distillation or evaporation for example salt salt we know it is sodium chloride sodium chloride or nsc sodium chloride from this sodium chloride if you take the sodium chloride and if you have to separate sodium and chlorine it will be impossible by physical means so from a pure substance the components cannot be separated by physical means but from the mixer the components can be separated by physical means now let us learn about different types of mixes mixes are of two types they are homogeneous and heterogeneous mixes are of two types they are homogeneous and heterogeneous so to understand what is homogeneous and heterogeneous mixes let us go through an experiment suppose how many students are there in our class we can divide them into four categories suppose if there are 40 students we can make them four groups each group contains 10 students and we can make them as a b c and d these are the groups and for the group a we can give a beaker with beaker with 50 ml of water 50 ml of water and one spatula of copper sulfate we can give one spatula of copper sulfate we remember copper sulfate it is blue in color in the first lesson we have learned copper sulfate is formula is cu so and for the group b we can give the same 50 ml of water in a beaker and instead of one spatula we can give two spatula of copper sulfate and for the group 3 and 4 group 3 and 4 we can give different amounts of potassium permanganate and salt potassium permanganate formula is same as for the previous lesson we have i have may you understand the formula of potassium permanganate is kno4 and sodium chloride our common salt it is nsl we can give one one spatula of potassium permanganate and two spatula of sodium chloride and for the d we can give two spatula of potassium permanganate and two spatula of sodium chloride any one quantity any quantity we can take it. so after we have observed we many observed we can say that group a and b got the solutions of copper sulfate group a and b they got solutions of copper sulfate because 50 ml of water and copper sulfate here copper sulfate has been dissolved in the given water so after dissolving we cannot separate the copper sulfate from water because it is thoroughly mixed up or there was a uniform composition we can say that everywhere the copper sulfate has been it has been dissolved so next we can take potassium permanganate we know that it is purple color and salt it is white color we can make a we can mix it even after mixing also we can understand which is copper sulfate sorry which is potassium permanganate and which is salt in the second case also same mixes we have taken so it will be easy to identify which is copper sulfate and which is iron so here we have learned that there are the here we have learned two types of mixes a and b they got the mixer they are homogeneous a and b both 
the mixture that is known as homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixture is the mixture which has uniform composition throughout the mix. Throughout. So its composition will be same everywhere. Its composition will be same everywhere. Such solutions, such mixtures are known as homogeneous mixtures. Many examples we can say, take a glass of water, add a spoon of sugar and dissolve it. Can we see where is sugar after dissolving in it? We can't see. As we, we cannot see, we can say that it is a homogeneous mixture. And the taste of that mixture also, it will be same everywhere. If you have taken one drop of water from the top of the tumbler or one drop of water from the bottom of the tumbler, both it will have the same taste. And uh, we can take one glass of water and add a spoon of salt. We got the salt solution. Salt solution also in the same way, it dissolves and it is distributed equally everywhere in the water. So we can say that these are homogeneous mixtures. Example for homogeneous mixtures are sugar solution or sugar in water and salt in water. Next thing that is going to remain in two groups, they are C and D. They have common uh, potassium permanganate and sodium chloride. Here the mixtures are easily distinguishable, means they won't have a uniform composition. They will not have a uniform composition. We can see, if you observe, we can see in some places there will be more sugar. Sorry, there will be more potassium permanganate and some places there will be more sodium chloride. So that composition, it will not be same throughout. Such mixtures are known as heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous mixture also many examples we can say. The mixture of iron and sulfur. The mixture of iron and sulfur or the mixture of water and chalk powder or the mixture of water and salt, sorry, the mixture of salt and soil. So many examples we can say about heterogeneous mixtures. They do not have heterogeneous mixtures, do not have uniform composition throughout. But homogeneous mixtures have uniform composition throughout. Based on the size of the particles of a mixture, we can classify the mixtures into three categories. They are solution, suspension and polymers. Based on the size of the particles in the mixture, mixtures can be classified as solutions, suspensions and polyols. So in this class, now we are going to learn about solution in detail. What is solution? Solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Solution, it's a mixture of two or more. It is solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Example, sugar in water or salt in water. So, so or another example is lemonade. Lemonade in summer season you might have used lemonade. Lemon juice mixed with water and other sugar or salt that is known as lemonade. Here in lemonade also after dissolving we cannot see where, where, where is lemon juice and where is salt or where is sugar and where is water or it was mixed up thoroughly. So there was the uniform composition throughout. So it is that is why it is known as home, it is known as solution. Solution. So, solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. And one common doubt you may get that if mixture is, uh, sorry, this solution is only in liquid state. That is a wrong consumption. 
solution can be in solid liquid or gas there are the solid solutions you have learned about alloys alloys is the mixture of metals metals or metal or non metal they are known as alloys alloys are in solid state so that is also an example for solution solid solution and air air is a mixture air is a mixture and air is a homogeneous mixture as air is a homogeneous mixture we can say it as solution because air contains nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide it contains so its composition will be same everywhere so we can say it as homogeneous homogeneous mixture as well as it is a gaseous solution or it is a solution in gaseous state hope it is clear so how you know solution contains two parts solution contains two parts they are solvent and solute they are solvent and solute what is solvent what is solvent the component of the solution that dissolves the other component what is solvent solvent is the component of solution that will dissolve the other component what will be other component solute so solvent is the component of the solution that will dissolves solute and one more thing you can note solvent will be in large quantity in a solution solvent will be in large quantity for example if you take the sugar solution water will be more quantity sugar will be less quantity and water dissolves sugar so what is the, what is solvent there ah oh, obviously solvent water is solvent and sugar is solute so what is solute solute is the component of the solution that is dissolved that is dissolved in a solution a component will be dissolved that solvent that component is known as solute that component will be dissolved in solvent that component is known as solute usually solute will be in less quantity just now we told that in sugar solution sugar we take less quantity and water we take more quantity here yes, sugar is a solute solute and solvent together to form solution Together to form solution. So here are some. Uh, now we are going to discuss some common common solutions, and we are trying to distinguish the parts. That means we are trying to name the solute and solvent. Sugar solution. Now example I told that so in sugar solution we know sugar is. solute and water is solvent that is it won't get any confusion and there is a disinfectant that we use in our first aid box in most of the schools uh, this solution is there i think that is tincture of iodine tincture of iodine tincture of iodine it is a solution in exam if you ask the question name the solute and solvent in tincture of iodine so tincture of iodine what is tincture of iodine we say tincture of iodine is the solution in which iodine is dissolved in alcohol iodine is dissolved in alcohol if you know that tincture of iodine is iodine dissolved in alcohol we can say which is solute and which is solvent solvent is alcohol and solute is iodine so next one is air air is also a solution we told that air is a gaseous solution so what are the components of air 
we know there will be large commodities nitrogen so we can consider nitrogen as nitrogen as solvents or in that other components like as uh, other components like oxygen carbon dioxide are dissolved so now it is the time to learn the properties of solutions what are the properties of solution maybe there are four, four properties of solution we can remember them very easily and now itself before leave this class itself we can learn what are the properties of what are the properties of solution first property when we define solution we have learned what is that solution is a homogeneous mixture solution is a homogeneous mixture and size of the particle is very very small second point the particle size is very very small in the order of 1 nano less than 1 nanometer in the order of less than 1 nanometer what is mean by nanometer 1 nanometer is equal to 10 by 2 minus 9 meter you can imagine the size 1 meter divided by 1 followed by 9 zeros then we get 1 nanometer size of the particle is less than 1 nanometer second point we learn so after second point size of the particles are very very small so we can say that it cannot be seen with the naked eyes we cannot see the particles of the solution with the naked eyes in a sugar solution can we see the sugar particles we cannot see because the particles are very very small in the order of 10 raised to minus 9 meter or nanometer so next one if we allow a allow the light from a torch to pass through pass through the solution can we see the path of the solution in that liquid or in that beaker it won't be possible to see the reason is that there will not be any scattering effect or tinder effect is not observed in the case of solutions solution does not in solution tinder effect is not observed and the last two points the component of the solution cannot be separated by physical means physically we cannot separate the components of solution from the sugar solution can we separate sugar and water by filtration it will not be separated by physical means so these are the properties of these are the properties of solution i would like to say remember you the properties of solution once again first of all they are homogeneous mixture second one the size of the particles are very very small in the order of 10 raised to minus 10 meter or 1 nanometer and it cannot be seen with naked eyes and next point tinder effect is not observable if the if the question asks the why tinder effect is not observable you can answer that the size of the particle is very very small as the size of the particle is very very small in the order of 10 raised to minus 10 meter or 1 nanometer tinder effect is not observed in the case of solution and the last point the components of the solution cannot be separated by any physical means hope you have understood the topic what we have discussed today and tomorrow next day class we will learn about concentration of a solution and